Expedition Cassandra Voices. This is our annual limited run print edition. They're selling the hot cakes. Limited edition Cassandra Voices. This is our annual available now. Limited run print edition. They're selling the hot cakes. Limited edition Cassandra Voices. This is our annual available now. Limited edition Cassandra Voices. This is our annual. You can buy it here exclusively on Grafton Street. Dublin's prime retail street. About a year ago, I began an online magazine called Cassandra Voices. The intention was to feature writing by authors you wouldn't ordinarily come across in the media landscape. We developed a following online with strong material. Some of the highlights were the environmental stories we ran, as well as the poetry and other arts coverage, which we see as an essential complement to our political content. After a while, I began to question the value of exclusively publishing online and felt a strong urge to produce a hard copy, something tangible for people to hold on to and read our longer form articles more easily. The hard copy required hard choices as to which articles over a year's publication would make it in and which we'd have to leave out. Our great design team were working hard to find things like the right font to use, things you really wouldn't think about most of the time. My main partner in the online and hard copy has been the artist and photographer Daniele Adini with whom I share a passion for politics and poetry and the redemptive power of art. Oh, oh yes. There he is. See, everybody goes straight to the photos. They don't care about the words, do they, huh? There's the harp, looking a bit tarnished, unfortunately. To go with our article on the Irish Constitution, the harp needs more than tuning. We got some lovely photos here from my from my colleague Daniele. Look at that, that's a that's a masterpiece that he's looking at. The photo's alright as well. Hmm. We got some nice graphics some as well. Quite focused. That man was standing there for like half an hour or something. Was he? Yeah, it was. There's a story behind every photo. We got lovely poetry as well. From our poetry editor, Ed Clark in Oxford. Where's my... This is the sport. I think Daniele likes birds. It's fair to say that. I do, yeah. Oh, well, uh, let's let's find the uh, let's find the one about from Milan. I was like this one. Look at that. What is that? What is that translators, Daniel? La periferia. La periferia riguarda con odio. What is the that? suburbs look at you with hate. What does that mean? Hate. Oh. The suburbs. Looks, looks at you with hate. Well, what does that mean? That's the tax office. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's Moore Street. A lot of debate went into the cover photograph, naturally. Yeah. We wanted an image of Dublin. Um, I think it's a street that uh, is quite vulnerable to 
development at the moment. It's got a great connection to the city. Oh, it's another thing that won't last long, as it is anyway. As anything does. Yeah. But there are ways and ways of changing, you know. This, this is the picture that we chose to represent uh, the legal section, the law section of the magazine, which uh, I think most people would recognize as the four courts outside which a lot of homeless people are sleeping, ironically enough. And it's our belief that the law should vindicate people's socioeconomic rights as well as their personal rights. And that's something that's been missing from the Irish Constitution. So that's one big part of what we're promoting. How does it feel, uh, real co how, how, how real copies feel compared well, to online now at the moment? Like, what do you think? Well, I reckon the internet's going to disappear within a few years. Maybe. And we'll still have this at least, won't we? Yeah, actually. Well, that's yeah. one thing, yeah. When, they're, when archaeologists when alien archaeologists are looking back over human civilization in a few hundred years, uh, they'll find this, maybe. Yeah. By the internet, what do you think of the internet? What, what, what gives you... Well, I mean... Why do you think the internet is going to disappear like that? It's not tangible, is it? You know, it's, it's something... It is disappearing all the time. You know, I put something up, I take it down. It's ephemeral. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's constantly disappearing. And so in a way, you know, who's going to store all that information? You know, it's just information, information. Everybody uploading constantly, you know, it, it can't survive, you know, in, in its current form. And especially as our, as our world begins to fracture politically, uh, I don't know if we can have a world wide web anymore, you know? Mm. What if, where is China going? Where is America going? Where are small countries like Ireland going, you know? Uh, probably need to preserve some record, some tangible record that we can hold on to. I totally agree with that, because that's, that's why I love printing. You know? And uh, until a print is made. I also get the impression that people don't really don't really read articles online in the same way as they do with, with the text they have in front of them. You know, they, it doesn't register in the same way. It doesn't, you don't uh, receive the information that, as well as easily online because you're constantly checking other things. Things are popping up on your computer, mm. on your phone. You're kind of in a constant state of distraction from this light emanating from a machine and all these you know, you know, digital waves coming at you. So print? Well, it, it has a place and the internet and social media and all these things also have a place and they're great and they, they, they allowed us to, to begin and to get going. There's almost zero startup cost with that once you have a little bit of expertise. But I think the tangible form is, is worthwhile as well. Printing a hard copy propelled me into a new world. It was no longer a case of simply clicking the upload button and watching the statistics flow in. Now I had to meet real people in real bookshops and hustle to get Cassandra onto the shelves. One friend suggested it'll all end up in landfill, but I'm doing my best to prove him wrong. Is that, yes, is that good? That's right. So I'll put it in the book. Okay. Building the book cast me in the unlikely role of a salesman, going from bookshop to bookshop, peddling my wares. For me, the experience has been heartening and enlightening, but challenging too. People are generally reluctant to purchase a publication they haven't heard of and the short print run and quality of the production 
means it doesn't come cheap. They might be receptive to Cassandra voices, I think. How you doing? Oh, yeah. We have this uh, Irish Catholic priest who's been doing some It's got some uh, fairly hard-hitting articles and uh, some good photography, which uh, I think will be in keeping with the uh, with this shop with this shop's philosophy. Yep. So would you would you like to take a few on a sale? Yeah, I'll or take some. Take three to start off with, and they'll sell. I'll take a few more and order okay. more. That's, I'll order more copies. That for sounds you. fair enough. All right. right. Thanks See a lot. Cheers. <laughs> The online version will continue, but I would hope that we will have further hard copies available in the future. Hey, Dan, I know this is the worst possible time, but uh, I just brought out a book, which is a compilation of, um, of a magazine's publications over a year. Because, uh, hey, do you have a minute? Well, I have just one thing to sell, which is. Uh, oh no, I don't want to buy anything. <laughs> this is uh, the uh, online. We're an online magazine. We brought out a print publication for yeah. the. Yeah, yeah. And oh, how much does that retail at? That retails at 25. Yeah, no, not, there's no way. This is a second hand shop uh -huh. at a bargaining shop, so it's junky for 4 95 yeah, So yeah. we can't do that. Yeah, yeah. No it's all Irish produced and it, it, uh, no, no, recycled no, there's, papers. There's, and there's no point in the magazine. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Uh -huh. Whenever anybody brings in a self published thing or, or anything uh -huh. like that, I always buy one copy for myself uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I always turn down all the rest because nobody here, none uh -huh. of my customers, sure, sure. will pay that amount of money. Yeah, yeah. They might in the gutter press, which is a proper professional yeah, yeah, shop yeah, 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 yeah. with an interest in literary stuff, but uh, here it's just uh, nonsense like that. Well, for next uh, to nothing. Why don't I give you a copy? No, 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 that's, that oh, would be wrong. Go. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll give you a tenner and then uh, you can uh, bring me in a second hand copy someday. <laughs> How's that? Um, who, who's the organisation? Is it you? Or yes, yes, I'm the editor, yeah. yeah okay, we just around here so we can do that. Go, go, turn. Janice, can you give this man a voucher? Yeah, um, are you recording? Just a little <laughs> bit, just a can little you, bit. Can you, okay. No? Hi. Oh, so, so shy. No, just... Just give, just give man a voucher for 10 quid. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, RTE supports the arts. And so it's <laughs> so not to the degree that you Sure, sure, I understand, I understand. <laughs> Very kind. All right. Um, uh, what's your name? Frank Armstrong. Yeah. There you go. Well, that, that, that's for you guys. <laughs> Limited run, print edition. They're selling the hot caps. Limited edition, Cassandra Voices. This is our annual. Available now. Limited run, print edition. Limited edition, Cassandra Voices.